Now let's look at how to do a little bit of uh, getting around of our network view over here. So um, similar to how holding alt and middle mouse clicking would allow us to kind of pan around our scene over here. Over here in the network view, holding down the middle mouse button will allow you to pan uh, around your network view like so. You can also right click and zoom in and out by kind of dragging your mouse around while holding down the right click button. Similarly to how we were homing in on our objects, for example, over here, if we select the uh, pig head geometry and go to our scene view and hit spacebar F, we can see our pig head. We can also do that over here in our network. So if I hit F here, you can see that it frames this node. So if I go and select the rubber toy, so I'm gonna hit the S key, select the rubber toy, in the scene view, come back over here and hit F, you can see that it kind of centers the uh, rubber toy node in our scene. And this might seem kind of pointless right now, but once you get a really big networks, it can be really handy to be able to home in on your nodes as well as not just your objects in your view. So also similarly to how I can use the spacebar H key to frame all my objects in the scene view, over here I can do the same. So if I just middle mouse and drag my nodes off to the side and you know, you, you're figuring you're lost, you can't find out where all your nodes are, here you can hit the H key and it'll frame them all up just like so. The next thing we have over here are our flags. So you can see we've got this kind of green icon and this blue icon on the kind of sides of our geometry node. And if we hover over the node, you can see that this kind of radial menu pops up. These all kind of associate. So this green one associates with this flag and this blue one associates with this flag. What the flags do is they allow you to control certain aspects of your nodes. For example, the display flag, this I, if I turn that off, you can say it just hides our geometry in the viewport. And over here, Likewise with the rubber toy, we're able to hide it as well by just turning on or off the blue flag by either clicking this little icon that's floating in the radial menu around it or the actual flag itself. The other flag here is this selection flag. So if I untick that selection flag like so, you can see that that, that green flag is off and then I won't be able to select it in the viewport. I can still select the pig head, but I can't select the rubber toy. It's just kind of like locked from being able to be selected. Just turn that back on and then I'm able to select between the two of them like so. This other one uh, that appears in the radial menu is the info icon, and it will allow you to kind of see information about your node. So you can kind of click on that to um, get some information. It says what kind of node type, where it's located in your scene, and so on and so forth. So the next most important thing about the network view is how to make more nodes. So the way you want to normally do that is to use the tab menu. So if you have your mouse over here, similarly to how we had our mouse over here and we click tab, we get all sorts of different things that we can do with our viewport. Over here in the network view, we hit the tab and we have a similar list of things that we can do over here in our network view. So for example, if we wanted to add more uh, test geometry, we could select it from here and select crag and just click our mouse in the network view and it'll drop him down. You can see him here over here in our scene view. Um, I'm just gonna delete that. Another way we could do it is hitting tab. And like we did before, we just start typing test geometry and then it'll kind of filter out what all of our test geometry is. And we could, uh, you know, select it from here again, or we could say, uh, whoops, I'm just gonna hit tab and say uh, test geo. And then we can use our up down arrow. Say I wanted to throw down the squab, navigating to the squab and hitting enter twice. And then you can see that it just kind of throws down the squab test geometry right under where my mouse was as well. I'm just going to delete that one. So the tab tab menu is very important and it also will vary depending on what context you're in, which we'll get into a little bit later, but we're going to dive into SOPs later, which is where the majority of the work happens, which is actually inside of these geometry nodes. To get into a geometry node, you can just double click on it. And here you can see we're in a completely different network that has the thing that generated our pig head. To get back up, you can see here that we've got this sort of uh, navigation bar that's sort of appeared. I'm just clicking on the object level and we're popping back up. So you can see that double clicking to get in, you can see that we've got, we're inside our object to test geometry pig head object. So this is sort of like a file path that we're navigated to. So we're inside this test geometry pig head object folder and we're looking at our uh, test geometry pig head generator here. So you can uh, dive in by double clicking and you can go back up by uh, clicking uh, this object level button right here. Likewise, you could click on the geometry object and hit the I key for diving inside, I kind of like to think of. And then you can hit the U key for diving up or getting out of that geometry view. So at this point, 
you may be wondering like where an, an outliner or sort of object manager, project manager tree view would be for your scene. And in Houdini, that is actually called the tree view. We can take a look at that over here. If we slide our mouse over to the left hand side, you can see there's this little bar that's really thin. Um, and then there's a couple arrows on it. So I've got two arrows that are pointing out to the side with this little uh, paddle icon in the middle here. So I'm going to select one so that my little thing kind of has this little bar with the right arrow sticking out of it. And I'm just going to click it and you can see that out pops this thing that looks like, you know, an outliner if you're familiar with it from some other 3D app. And in here, we've got a whole bunch of different contexts. We're not really going to cover um, really many of these other contexts at all. Uh, what we're really concerned with is the object context. These other contexts are basically designed for handling various other tasks like compositing and creating materials and rendering. We're really just focused on this object context. And inside our object context, you can see we've got our two geometry nodes that we created for our pighead and our rubber toy. And I'm selecting between them by selecting these different um, things in our scene. And if we barrel down further, we open these up, you can see that the generators for those geometries are as well nested inside of these uh, nodes as if I were going to dive inside. Now, if I click on one of these, like the pig head, you can see that it dives us inside of this network for us. And we can actually use this to kind of navigate in, in and out of our nodes as we see fit. Now, while the tree view resembles a object manager from other 3D programs, it doesn't actually behave the same. So for example, if I wanted to group my rubber toy underneath my pig head, I can't just grab this in my object manager and drag it under the pig head. It doesn't work like that. I can't really group things together that way. What I can do is I could select both of my objects in the network editor over here and click this little box icon and that will create a subnet. And you can see over here in the tree view that our subnet has appeared and it's got both of our objects inside of it like so. Likewise, over here, if I double click on my subnet, you can see we get these extra inputs. Those don't really matter. Let's drag those out of the way, but you can see we have our, our two geometries nested inside here nicely. And so I could jump back out here to this main object level and grab my subnet and move both of them uh, together like so. So they're kind of bound together. And if I want to get these out of the subnet and unparent them, I can't really drag them out back up to the object level or anything like this. I would select the subnet and I would, um, I could right click on this and choose actions and extract contents. And you can see that it moves it out and puts it into the object level. I can also, um, you know, if I put this back in the subnet, I can actually right click on this and say actions and extract contents and that will put it back out on the object level. So that's just sort of something to kind of note about how grouping works inside of Houdini and really your object management is occurring over here in the network editor, but this does help you visualize what's going on in your scene. Also, if you did want to create a sort of parent-child relationship where maybe say the rotation of the pig head would also rotate the rubber toy along with it. So if I rotate my pig head right now, you can see that it's just rotating independently. But if I wanted to bring the uh, test geometry along, I could wire it together to create a parent-child relationship. So if I grab the output of the pig head object and wire it into the test geometry, you can see that the test geometry kind of just jumped into place. And you can see that now it's bringing the rubber toy along with it when we rotate the pig head now. So that's sort of how you can create a parent-child relationship. Similarly to how I tap the bottom output node of this and, and wired it into here, I can disconnect that by holding down the Y key and just slicing through it. So I just hold down the Y key and slice through it and you can see it pops back to where it was supposed to be in the first place. Now, if I wanted to parent my rubber toy to the pig head, but I didn't want it to jump position, I could actually select my rubber toy and say, keep position when parenting and then wire them together. So I'm just going to drag my output from here into that. And you can see that now the parenting relationship has occurred, but this uh, rubber toy didn't jump at all. So I go back and select the pig head and hit the um, R key for rotation, rotate it about the Y axis. It's able to rotate, but I can parent and unparent it without having it jump around in space. So if I go over here, I can then hold down the Y key and left mouse drag through this wire to disconnect it. And the rubber toy is left here, but I can now rotate the pig head freely. So that's just sort of an important thing to note about um, how all that works with uh, parenting objects at the object level in Houdini.
All right, so before we go to our next section, I'm going to just uh, put everything kind of back where it was before. I'm going to return the test geometry to its uh, default position by, um, this time I'm going to do the shortcut. I'm going to hold down Control and middle mouse click on the translate parameter, and that's going to reset those values. And holding down Control and middle mouse clicking on the rotate parameter, that's going to reset those values. Then I'm going to select the rubber toy, and I'm going to uh, hold down Control and middle mouse click on both the translate and rotate. Uh, then I'm going to hit the T key and then uh, just pop it off to the side like we had it before. And um, yeah, that should be good for moving forward. I'm also going to collapse over this tree view because I'm not really going to need it for this uh, workshop. But um, it's just important. I thought that you know that it was there and, that, and what it's capable of and what it's not capable of.